Hi, I'm Al Dare, owner of Mickey's Bait and Tackle in Syracuse, New York, a Syracuse tradition for over 50 years. Um, and today we're going to talk about streamers. More specifically, we're going to talk about a particular pattern called the hardhead minnow. Uh, it's a simple pattern, uh, but very effective. I like fishing flies, and I guess this would be into that category. It's a fishing fly. Uh, it's made of just two materials and the thread is actually the body. In this case it's a uni stretch yarn and the, and the wing is actually made from squirrel tail fibers. Um, interesting little pattern. Um, we will definitely tie one for you and the beauty of this is again in its simplicity. Uh, I think the real effect of effectiveness uh, of the fly lies in the fact that it, it uh, utilizes squirrel tail. Squirrel, unlike bucktail or even calftail, is a much finer material and uh, has a lot more action in the water for that reason. Uh, it, at the vise, it could actually be the bane of the fly tire because it is a difficult material to tie with, but this pattern really puts this material in its place and you'll see why. Um, this pattern actually got a little acclaim back in 2005. It uh, was published in Fly Tire Magazine and Fly Fish America. I think every fly tire that's been fly tying for a while should have at least one pattern that uh, they can call their own. I guess this would be mine. It's called the Hardhead Minnow. And then we're going to tie this one for you here in a second. As you can see, the fly has a rather enlarged head and uh, the wing is tucked neatly under that and the body material is the exact same as the head material. Uh, it's a simple pattern and uh, the neat thing about this is that uni stretch comes in such a variety of colors and squirrel tail of course comes in such a variety of colors natural and dyed that you can make endless combinations of body color and wing color. The red uh, uni yarn, uni stretch and the natural gray squirrel happens to be one of my favorite combinations. But uh, I also like the pink with the dyed green uh, squirrel tail. It kind of looks like a little rainbow trout when in the water. So what I'll do is I'll take a hook and I like using about a model 2 to 4x long hook. This happens to be about a 3x long. It's a Mustad 9672. You could use the equivalent of the Diachi or the Tiemco or some of the other good brand name hooks that are on the market today. And one of the first things I'll do is to bend the barb of that hook to flatten that down with a pair of flat nose pliers. Just getting rid of that barb. Believe me, I've fished barbless for a while now, and you don't really lose a lot of trout when you fish barbless. And even if you do, it's not a big deal. I think maybe 1% of the fish you might lose, which is really not a lot over a lifetime, I guess, of fly fishing, especially if it's a lot easier on the fish. So what we'll do is we'll put that hook in the vise. And I'm going to tie this little red model for you using the red uni stretch. I'll start my uni stretch just like I would start thread for a uh, for any typical fly by wrapping over itself and then wrapping back over the thread itself on the shank of the hook okay I'll stop right about there now you'll notice there's a tag okay and we're gonna leave that I'm not gonna cut that you'll see the uh, the reason for that in a second here but I am gonna take some squirrel tail and I'm gonna be using a natural gray squirrel and I'm going to cut a piece of that very close to the bone so as to get the longest possible fibers and resist the temptation to use too much material like any fly I think sparse flies actually catch more fish for the simple reason that the material has that much more action in the water sparse flies may not catch that many fishermen just like when in our shop we sell a lot of bucktail jigs for walleye and bass it's the ones that are tied sparse that are the most productive. The ones that are tied full, however, seem to catch the most fishermen. I think there's a, uh, there's a lesson there. But we're going to tie this one sparse, so I'm going to cut that. There's my squirrel tail, and here's one of the secrets to this pattern as to why it's so durable. We're going to reverse tie the wing. In a traditional streamer, you would just lay that material just like that on top and then form a head. But in this case, what I'm going to do is we're going to tie that in reverse. And squirrel is so fine 
that it's so difficult to deal with. Typically, when you use squirrel in a traditional fashion, when it's tied in up front, it'll always pull out. But when you, when you tie it in reverse, there's no way that that squirrel is going to pull out. So I'm going to bring my thread forward to just behind the eye. I'm going to lay that squirrel down, the butt section where I cut facing towards the bend of the hook, switch hands here for a second, pinch that on there, wrap that thread body material, the uni stretch, over the top of that squirrel, the wing, and then notice how we keep this here in place. The butt sections of the, uh, the, uh, the squirrel are actually going to become part of the underbody. So I'll be wrapping my thread right over those, just like this. That's a hallmark of durability. That thing is not going to come apart on you. And it makes dealing with squirrel so much more easy. Okay. Now you'll see the logic of leaving this tag in place. Whenever you do a yarn body, you always want to try to leave a tag for the simple reason that it's going to lock the yarn in. If you don't, after a period of fishing this fly, uh, eventually that yarn is going to trail loose and is actually going to come apart on you. So when we leave that tag, we lock it over the top of the rear of the body. It actually holds the yarn body in place right at the rear so that it doesn't end up becoming looking like this after a few times going fishing. I'm going to wrap that yarn forward right over the tag. You can cut that tag now, get rid of it. I made it long in this case, just, to, just for uh, show purposes. Now we just take the wing that we formed, which is facing forward, and we bring it back. We take our yarn or our thread body and wrap right over the top of that wing as we fold it back. I had a few strays here. I'm just going to get rid of those with my scissors. Okay. And then we form a head. And the head is exaggerated, I have to admit. But I think that's what gives it its silhouette. And that's why we call it the hard head minnow. So you have a rather exaggerated collar formulating. But you know that squirrel tail is locked right in there, and that is definitely not coming out. And then it's just a matter of taking a whip finish tool, or if you want to whip finish by hand, you can do that. And whip finish. Okay, and just cut your thread. And there you have it, a hard head minnow with a very sparse squirrel tail wing, extremely effective when wet. Well, that's it. Uh, the fly is finished, with the exception of the finish. And in this case, I'm going to use a good clear nail polish, or you could use your favorite clear head cement. And uh, I always like putting two coats of finish on this fly, because the first coat, what will happen is it'll actually get absorbed into the threads or the material itself. And then you let that settle in, and you come back a few hours later, or even the next day, and give it a second coat. And that's when you get that real glossy, bead-like effect that, that is so desirable when making this particular pattern. Uh, the reason why I like this fly is its simplicity and its effectiveness. It really catches fish, and I think it is because of the squirrel tail. It's so fine, and it undulates when wet underwater. And when you tie these in reverse fashion, as I did with the wing, it makes it so much easier to construct. Again, as mentioned earlier, the uni stretch yarn comes in a variety of different colors. And of course, the squirrel tail, both natural and dyed, gives you such an array to choose from in combinations. Um, this is a really interesting pattern because of its simplicity. And uh, I really enjoy fishing it. And I'm glad you gave me the opportunity to share this with you. So stick around. I think there'll be more of these flies to come in the future. and. Uh, Many happy moments on the river. Thank you.